Hello, everybody. Um, I was asked by uh, Dr. Hirsch to talk about ocular allergy and uh, keratoconus. Um, ocular allergy, allergy affects by some account 15% of oral population. In United States, it's being estimated that over 50 million Americans suffer from some sort of allergy, and this incidence is increasing, uh, probably due to the fact that um, we are more aware of the condition, as well as the changing environment that we live in. Uh, there are more trees planted every year, more grass, uh, more houses. Um, all these environmental changes can lead to uh, additional uh, uh, allergies. Um, it is the sixth leading cause of chronic illness in the United States, and by some estimate, the cost of uh, to the healthcare system is um, uh, is over 18 billion dollars uh, a year um, in our country. Allergy is. Uh, loosely divided into two types. One is major allergy and the other is minor. Major allergy are things such as hay fever, asthma, atopic dermatitis, and these tend to be more chronic. Minor allergy are angioedema, urticaria, and food allergies. These are things that show up intermittently and they're considered, they're usually self-limiting. The Molecular, at, at molecular level, uh, at the cellular and molecular level, allergy is categorized as a type 1 hypersensitivity. And there is a, um, it's, it's primarily a type 1 hypersensitivity, meaning that it requires two exposures. One, um, one example of such thing is um, poison ivy. If the first time you expose to poison ivy, you uh, your 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 body sees the poison ivy, your your immune system sees it, but it doesn't react um, to manifest on on your uh, eye or skin or anywhere else. But however, it does prime the immune system so that next time you're exposed to the poison ivy, the mast cells that are created uh, degranulates, meaning that they release uh, these uh, mediators, then which then lead to um, uh, itchy eyes um, and um, uh, tearing and and um, uh, redness. And, and the discomfort. Uh, this, uh, these mediator, the histamines, then further stimulates um, uh, eosinophils and neutrophils to release various factors that can potentially be damaging to the ocular tissue. There is also a component of what we call type 4 hypersensitivity in patients who suffer allergy um, uh, and these are more chronic condition. This is uh, this is a memory um, uh, aspect of your immune system where the T cells or the memory cells remember uh, certain antigen, and they will uh, they are ready to uh, create uh, problems whenever these uh, antigens are introduced into the into the system, and and uh, these memory cells can frequently when activated can lead to um, significant uh, morbidity in the body, including uh, scar formation and damaging of, um, of various uh, tissues. And um, these are more prevalent in the major uh, allergies that I mentioned earlier, such as asthma uh, or atopic dermatitis. When you have ocular allergy or allergy that affects the eye, the hallmark of it is itching. Itching, itching, itching. If there's no itching, it's not an allergy. And, but aside from the itching, there are tearing, redness, irritation, thickening of the eyelids, and some discharge. And aside from the eye, people suffer from ocular allergy, also suffer from runny nose. They suffer from sneezing, congestion, and there can be um, a skin rash on the eyelid and the face and elsewhere as well. Of ocular allergy syndromes, we call it, there are basically four types. 
there's an ocular allergic conjunctivitis. There's something we call vernal conjunctivitis. We have giant papillary conjunctivitis and atopic keratoconjunctivitis. And it's the atopic keratoconjunctivitis that is strongly correlated with keratoconus. Most allergic conjunctivitis is, um, is due to something in an environment, and it's the most common form of ocular allergy. Here you see a uh, picture of uh, pollen, micro, micrograph of, um, electron micrograph of pollen, and a dust mite. It actually, we're not allergic to dust mites, it's actually the dust mite droppings that we are allergic to. And that's a rather disgusting thought, but <laughs> that's the fact. These are the causes of your seasonal and perennial allergy. Perennial means it's allergy all the time. People who are allergic to dust, as long as there's dust, their allergic reaction ensues. So they have itching, burning, watery mucoid discharge from the eye, usually in both eyes, and there are swollen conjunctiva, as you might see from this picture and uh, there may be other reaction on the surface of the cornea. Like this picture, there's a, we call it a tear lake is increased, so there's more tear, the eyes are more watery. These people have, um, a cr and when people are, have a chronic allergic conjunctivitis, they may have uh, what we call allergic shiner because of chronic eye rubbing, and uh, this guy is doing something we call allergic salute. And, and if you look at these patients carefully, there's a crease on their nose because of uh, chronically doing this. And moving on, vernal keratoconjunctivitis is, is, a, is a condition that occurs in children, mostly boys actually, and specifically boys from the Middle East and Africa. And why that is the case, we don't know. It may be a genetic predisposition, but most of these uh, children also have um, uh, asthma to go along, and it's some sort of allergic reaction. And uh, they tend to outgrow it when they hit puberty. And they have uh, itching, severe itching, they're rubbing their light eyes like crazy. And there's excessive discharge, and, and if you flip the eyelid, there's all these bumpy things underneath the eyelid. And this is the, the uh, what we call follicles, and they're the, um, this is the eyelid flipped up. And um, this is the hallmark of vernal keratoconjunctivitis. And in severe cases of vernal, they develop corneal ulcers, and we call this shield ulcers. And sometimes this can be sight-threatening, meaning that it can affect the, the, the vision. And in a worst case scenario, it can perforate, and people can be in danger, the patient can be in danger of losing their eyes. And it is also a combination of the, the different hypersensitivity that we told you about, I told you about. So the treatment for these patients also is to control the allergy. The third one is the giant papillary conjunctivitis. It is a, um, uh, do people, how many people here wear contact lens? So most people, uh, more than half. And so you may or may not know uh, about GPC, giant papillary conjunctivitis. It's an allergic reaction. It's classified as an allergic reaction. And it is basically your reaction to your contact lens use. And so, so um, you develop these bump. Actually, it looks fairly similar to the ones from Vernal, but it's slightly different. It's, uh, it's, um, people with these eyes have um, uh, almost always uh, contact lens use, and it's, uh, it limits the contact lens usage so that you have to keep your lens out and, and in patients who have keratoconus that is a significant um, uh, loss of productivity uh, if you can't wear contact lens to, to um, uh, uh, get your work done. Atopic keratoconjunctivitis is the fourth and the one that I said that um, has um, uh, association, strong correlation to keratoconus. And this is a condition that occurs in, in uh, middle-aged uh, middle uh, people, and it's a lot like vernal, uh, except it affects the skin. Vernal does not affect the skin. Uh, allergic conjunctivitis really doesn't affect the skin except for from the rubbing. But people with atopic keratoconjunctivitis always have skin problem. Like this woman, her eye has um, uh, very has a discolored 
a thickened eyelid. And that's a, this is like an early um, ato atopic disease. And this, where the eyelid is completely thickened, loss of eyelashes, all this crusting along the margin of the eyelid and red eye and corneal scar, this is the end stage atopic keratoconjunctivitis. conjunctivitis. And there are, aside from the, the, the thickened eyelids and the loss of eyelashes and, um, and the corneal scar, uh, there, sometimes there will be a ulceration on the surface and that can lead to infection. And, um, and when the cornea scars like this, obviously uh, it is um, uh, detrimental to the vision. When, when these patients have um, chronic situation, they're uh, constantly rubbing their eyes. And whether that leads to uh, uh, keratoconus, uh, is uh, one theory how uh, these patients have keratoconus. As this, you see this woman with uh, atopic disease, and her this is uh, one of the most advanced keratoconus one uh, doctors will, will see. And she actually had corneal transplant here in both eyes many years ago. And uh, they, after that, they just <laughs> failed. And not only they failed, they became keratoconic again. Um, atopic keratoconjunctivitis, besides aso being associated with um, keratoconus, it is also associated with retinal detachment, uh, a kind of cataract we call PSC cataract. And um, generally, the outcome is poor for corneal transplant in these patients. So with respect to ocular allergy and keratoconus, we're talking about um, a couple of things. The uh, first, the GPC, uh, a kind of allergic con condition that uh, patients uh, suffers from uh, chronic contact lens use can limit your uh, uh, possibility of wearing contact lens uh, in the long run. There are treatment for this, but the best treatment actually is to stay off the contact lens. The um, ocular allergies are associated with keratoconus, and there are various theories how that is. Rubbing being one of them, eye rubbing being one of them, and the other one is when there's inflammation, we have activation of various enzymes within the tissue. So in, if there are um, collagenase, what we call um, uh, enzyme that breaks down protein, such as uh, collagen, uh, it can make the cornea weak, which is kind of reverse of the collagen cross-linking you just heard about. Um, and the, the tissue can be floppy, thinner, possibly. And in some of the studies uh, have found that eye rubbing is the strongest um, factor that's related to the strong uh, predictor of uh, keratoconus, strongest predictor of um, uh, keratoconus. And in some reports, the uh, patients who have keratoconus 50% uh, or more suffer from some sort of allergy. And I mentioned before that about 20% of U.S. population suffers from um, allergy, whereas in keratoconus population, that figure is up to 50%. So this is, uh, is uh, uh, kind of important data uh, going forward in, in, in managing patients with, um, with uh, keratoconus. And recurrence of keratoconus has been noted in patients with, um, uh, with ocular uh, allergy as well, uh, meaning recurrence meaning after cornea transplant. Um, some of the proposed mechanism includes increased cornea temperature because of the inflammation, and that can lead to um, uh, destabilizing the collagen fibrils that makes up the, the cornea. And uh, when you rub the eye, the hydrostatic pressure and the stretching of the tissue, um, you kind of you think about that kind of pulling the, on, the, on the bond of the collagen and stretching it out. And, and that may cause the fibro to slip and therefore make the, the cornea thinner and, and possibly weaker and make it prone to um, uh, become keratoconic. So, when you have allergy and keratoconus, and you want to avoid, um, and that can lead to eye rubbing. Chronic eye rubbing may possibly lead to keratoconus. So you know, if, you need to, if you want to tr successfully treat 
keratoconus in patients with allergy syndrome, the allergy must be addressed. Corneal transplant, we know, is more successful in patients with atopic dermatitis um, and keratoconus only when the atopic disease is controlled. If it's not controlled, the outcome is actually dismal. So to avoid this, you need to control the allergy. Now, the treat controlling the allergy, there are various strategies. Um, if, it's, if it's the um, uh, allergic conjunctivitis that I mentioned as the first syndrome, usually topical medications uh, does pretty de reasonable job and that some, some patients may require some, some pills. But when it comes to things like atopic disease, the, the one that's strongly associated, you do need systemic uh, immunosuppression um, in forms of sometimes even chemotherapy. So as an example, um, I met this patient about seven years ago, Mr. L, as I would call it. Uh, he is a 50-year-old Asian man who was sent to our office for a consultation on keratoconus. And indeed, he had keratoconus, but his he had a horrible looking face because it's all thickened and leathery and, and, and not just his face, his skin, his neck had um, a leathery uh, skin that was very typical of what we call eczema. It's a, for, it's a, it's a atopic uh, dermatitis and he had atopic keratoconjunctivitis as well. And he was taking Zyrtec and Zyrtec alone and that was doing nothing for him. His vision was 2040 in the right eye, 2030 in the left, and he had, um, he, he could not stop rubbing his eyes. This was his uh, topographical map from the initial visit, a very distorted cornea in the right side, which is consistent with the vis his vision. Left eye also shows a severe irregularity because of chronic eye rubbing coupled with thickened cornea, a uh, thickened eyelid that's pushing on the cornea. So I started on something called methotrexate. Methotrexate is something that we use to treat immunological disease, including um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, for example, because it's a form of um, uh, immune reaction. And in him, we started that. And his uh, atop atopic disease actually cleared up uh, very substantially to the point that his wife did not recognize him. And he had, he had con cornea transplant following the control of his disease. And uh, five years later, his cornea remains clear in the right eye with the 2030 with spectacle. He doesn't even need contact lens. And the left eye <coughs> is 2020, which was uh, worse before because he was rubbing his eye uh, chronically. The skin condition remains under control with methotrexate. He's, we've tried to come off the methotrexate, but every time we, we go off, he, um, his uh, condition flares up. So in summary, ocular allergy, allergy is a common condition, and that ocular allergy affects keratoconus patients by reducing contact lens uh, tolerance uh, in form of GPC. It is uh, keratoconus may be in part caused or worsened by ocular allergy and uh, more specifically eye rubbing. That's a result of ocular allergy. The control of ocular allergy may improve the treatment of surgical outcome uh, as well as medical treatment of, um, of uh, keratoconus. Thank you. <laughs>